Hello, we're Morto. We're doing another lovely picture. Um, I, I don't say all lovely. There are a few, if you look, that I say are horrible, but I, I do tend to, to try and buy nice pictures because they're going to sell better. Um, sometimes like, um, horrible pictures come into my possession or things I don't like very much and I, I won't put them on the website or I will reluctantly put them on the website or I'll send them to an auction to get rid of them or do a swap with someone. But this is a lovely picture. I'm only other one on the website at the moment. It is an, an 18th century oil painting oil on canvas. Um, it's very possibly uh, over the 1800 year into the 19th century, but I think when you see the back, and when I've talked about it, you'll realise it probably is late 18th century oil on canvas. So you, you can hear the picture, it's relatively tight. It's not drum-like, but it's taut. If you look at it with a light, it's, it's flat, there's no sag. There's no obvious problems with this picture. I will, however, say that the, the paint is crackled and this original paint would have been a lot brighter. We haven't had it looked at or cleaned, but the reds would have been vivid. It would have been a chalky blue, blue uh, sea. The puffy, puffy clouds would have been brighter. It would be more, more, much more blue um, and the masonry would have been much brighter. Yet there's red flags. So what's happened here is at some stage it looks like it's been retouched up here. In fact, it has been retouched. I can see it. The painting in the retouching is basic to the point of diameter. So it's not been restored by an expert. It's been restored in a shop or by the owner. And they, they've done it themselves. They put varnish over it, which holds the whole thing together. And it uh, makes any retouching blend, or blend into the background. But the, there is crackling. And it's very possible the crackling here was very, very much worse. Like, for example, here, it's still quite badly crackled. The crackling is even. It's not the same everywhere, but it is, it's not in noticeable sections. So the crackling there is quite bad. Here it's semi-okay. Where you get the crackle, the varnish goes matte and you, you, it has discoloured to a degree. If you wet your finger and wipe it, you'll get an idea of how it will look about. I'm just going to cloth and show you. If you bear with me. If you take a cloth and you wet it, you'll see the colours coming out. Now that's not how it will look if it's restored, but it will, that's halfway to how it will look. It will look like that, but it will look like that with, be with better colours. So as soon as you put the water on it, you see these characters coming out of the dusty background. There's a dinghy there, a foreground of characters. Um, these characters, I think, are Neapolitan, or Italian at least. So you'll, you'll see that there's a lot going on there. I, I wouldn't personally bother to have it restored, it costs so much money. But in my opinion, you, you, you can buy another picture. So, you know, rather than spending the money on the restoration, you can buy, have another one. And then, you know, you can also have them done down the line in 10 years or 20 years or, or whatever. Um, so, as I said Neapolitan, that the way the, the clothing is painted is, is in, my, in my view, Neapolitan. We're in Malta, it's just up the, it's just up the, up the sea not very far away and it's got this puffy clothing I keep saying puffy arms they've got the, these, these puffy shirts which to me looks sort of a Neapolitan sort of Italian um, there's a shipwreck here and there is a, a castle on a hill in Naples they did an awful lot of shipwreck pictures in the 18th and um, early 19th century and that was their staple it seems to me to be the sort of staple output and you'll see lots of very big pictures with a very very rough sea an apocalyptic sky, sometimes with lightning, not usually. You'll see a cliff, a precipitous cliff, boulders at the bottom. You'll see a few trees or building at the top. You'll see a shipwreck. You'll see people clambering about the rocks, trying to pick out the, the barrels and the ropes. And that's a very common thing. It's a, form a formulaic scene. Um, another type of scene, you get it, are called capriccios. Not painted by capriccio, though there is an artist called capriccio there. Capriccios, where you have these whimsical ruins, um, pillars, arches. This is not anything like a proper capriccio, but there are elements of capriccioism. You've got the castle. It's got a, a rampart. It's high. It's looking down. You've got a couple of towers. So you've got different dimensions from the Italian school. You have a very basically painted sea, a very basic sky. As I say, it's had the touchings here, which don't look great. But it's a nice size, the colours are the lovely, lovely sort of tealy greens, blues, 
browns, you've got the reds. It's a nice, interesting picture. It's a sort of a marine picture, but it's fairly naive and it's fairly basic. Right, the frame. The frame is really interesting. You've got a water gilded wooden frame. This is carved wood with gesso. It's not a piece of um, plain wood with gesso stuck on. It's carved wood and you have this border as well. The, the gesso makes it smooth so they can attach the, the gold leaf. They put Someone's put this green paint on it. In France they would call that rechampi, or it's like rechampi, it's certainly the colour they use. Um, it's not really rechampi because they would fill in the other flat bits. But it's not a new thing to see green paint on a picture frame. Um, I don't think it would have had any paint originally, I think it would have been all gold. And this would have been a very, very expensive frame, very, very expensive frame. I suspect it's the original frame. You have a, a bud in repeats all the way around. You have floral, mirrored areas, panels. You, you could probably call that an acanthus just about. You have this panel. Now that is scraffito, meaning it is there's a groove cut into the gesso before the gold's gone on. Very basic. But when you get panel, sgraffito, foliation in a, in a series, you, you know you're going back quite a long way. Now this has damage, and this is a, a really lovely piece of damage. It's not, it's not a sort of, um, you know, recent careless damage. This is rot and worm damage. And it shows you the carcass, which is pine. And it is very wormy. But it also shows you the, ge the gesso and the gold. So, so for, for an academic insight, if you, were to, if you were to show a student that damage, you, they're really going to start, they're really going to understand it more than if you try and explain it without them seeing it. So that's an anatomical cross-section and uh, dissection if you like. So we're, we're going to leave that on. You can have that repaired. I don't see the point. I think it's quite interesting. I quite like it. Um, I'll show you the back. <clears throat> There is detail on this back rim of the frame. I think this frame, sorry, this canvas looks like it's been relined. Oh. You can see this paper here. It usually means it's been relined. That might account for why it's quite tight for quite an old painting. This is the crackling in reverse. You can see where the, the paint has wrapped up the canvas and it's crackled up. It's, it's not as bad as a crocodile or lizard skin, but it's on the way. They're quite large flakes and they're not coming off, but they're, they're, they're not, it's not as new as it was when it was painted, obviously. The frame is not mitered, it's just butt jointed. A little bit of wood worm. Um, not a lot to tell you really about that. I think it could be original. I think that uh, it's possible this stretcher is replaced, but it was done a long time ago. And as I say, I don't know why this paper here, it's obviously been uh, augmented and adapted and repaired over, you know, historically, time after time. So we've shown you the picture. I'll turn it around once more. Very interesting thing. When you're in the Mediterranean, this sort of thing is a lovely thing to have. You know, this is what the nature of an island was. You were into shipping, you were into defending yourself from enemies. It's a shame it's not a picture of Malta. This is nothing like a Maltese castle, in my view. I don't think it's Malta. Um, there are two headlands, but it's not going to be Marsa or Angelo and, and Sanglia with, a, with a, an unbuilt Valletta. I don't think it is. Um, it's very possibly something to do with Malta, but I think it's more likely to be brought over from, from Italy or Sicily. The uh, Burgies, these triangular flags, are, are pleasant, shows the wind. There's a, there is a sort of ghost-like ship in the background. Um, and these inter interesting ships, the way the masts are painted. There's a white ensign on this galleon, I suppose it is. So, interesting picture. Not a huge amount of money. It's not a sort of attributed to any artist, not in brilliant condition. Um, it's not a, one of these academic pictures depicting a real scene, in my view. So um, you could call this a marine capriccio, I suppose. Anyway, I hope that's been interesting. Nice thing to have, and it's on our website. Thank you.